Hey everyone, it's Asia Dang. Thank you so much for joining me on my channel today. We're just gonna jump into it. We're gonna be talking about how to recession-proof your budget. Recessions are basically prolonged downturns in economic spending. You know, recessions can mean a lot of different things, right? It can mean job loss, it can be increased prices, it can mean increased interest rates, and depending on who you're talking to, we're either about to be in a recession or we've been in one. <laughs> I don't normally like to do these type of videos. I feel like there's a little bit of fear mongering going on, but um, like I said, I listen to what you guys are worried about, and according to my DMs, a lot of you are actually worried about this, so let's just talk about how to recession proof your budget. So the first thing you're going to do, and it should be a little obvious if you've been following me on my channel for a little bit, but it's to go over your budget or build one if you haven't already built one. If you are subscribed to this channel and you don't have a budget, sis, what are you doing? But if you're new here, like, share, and subscribe. I have a couple budgeting beginner videos. I will post the most recent one in the cards and I'm actually about to do a new updated how to budget for beginners video in March. So you can go ahead and look forward to that. And I'm also gonna link in the cards the five different budgeting techniques that you can use while building your budget. You should use those two videos simultaneously while you build your first budget. But you're going to want to build a budget now. Why? Because it's time to trim some fat from your budget so more money can go into savings, necessities, or debt. We'll get to those later. Knowing exactly where your money goes every month will help you navigate the wild, wild west of $10 eggs. It will also give you a better understanding as to where your money needs to go if a recession knocks on your front door. If you're able to live within your means now, you're less likely to go into debt when gas and food prices spike, and you're more likely to adjust your spending in other areas to compensate. I don't care what kind of app or budgeting method you use as long as you have a budget. I also don't care if you still are currently spending on luxuries as long as you can afford them. Do your budget, spot areas in which your budget is leaking, and plug those holes. All right, the second one is incredibly important and it is to fully fund your emergency fund. This is actually one of the first things that you're going to do in order to recession-proof your budget, but you can't build an emergency fund without a budget. Why? Because you need to know how much you spend monthly on necessities in order to figure out how much money you need to save for your emergency fund. I'll link any emergency fund related videos up in the cards for you to check out. But you know how I always tell y'all only use emergency funds in case of emergencies? Well, job loss due to a recession is in fact an emergency. Your emergency fund should at least be three months of expenses, though um, job searches tend to last around five months, so I would beef that up to five months of expenses at the very least. And remember, these expenses are only your necessities, so rent, mortgage, utilities, food, medication, insurances, and uh, minimum debt payments. Once you figure out how much you wanna save for your emergency fund, open up a high yield savings account. I do not care what high yield savings account you open up because it doesn't matter. As long as it's an online bank versus like Chase or Bank of America, you'll always get higher interest rates with online banks because they just don't have any overhead. I always get asked, what, what high yield savings account do you recommend? I promise you it does not matter. They are all the same. Okay, pick one. I like Ally, that's who I'm with. Do not invest your emergency funds. You wanna keep your emergency fund liquid and easily accessible for those emergencies. Avoid long-term effects of short-term job loss or pay cuts by having an emergency fund. Number three is to have additional sources of income. I am always wary of saying stuff like this, um, you know, make more money, find a side hustle, because it's actually not as easy as it sounds. But if you're worried about job stability, finding an additional source of income, even if it's just a couple hundred dollars throughout the month, will make a huge difference if you lose your main source of income. So whether it's consulting, selling clothes on Poshmark, or working some job on the weekend, you will feel much better knowing that you're covered if something goes south. Also remember, this doesn't have to be a long-term thing. So even if you currently, like tomorrow, want to find an extra job to quickly build up and fully fund your emergency fund and then stop that job, 
you can definitely do that for sure as well. All right, number four is to network. It's time to develop or maintain those professional relationships. Remember, networking is most effective when you offer help to others as well. Once you do someone else a favor, even if it's something as small as making an introduction, that person will be more inclined to help you in the future. And remember to follow up with a thank you with any advice, assistance, or connections that were given to you. Number five is to pay off your high interest debt. With rising interest rates, debts with variable interest rates like credit cards can go from bad to worse. Make paying off your high interest debts a priority, but at the very least, don't contribute, don't add to those accounts. Number six is to invest in the long term. I think the reason why I was so afraid of investing back in the day, I mean, besides my $200,000 of debt, was because every time you know, we would be in a recession. The news and media uh, portrayed this recession as being like a family ender because people lost all their investments. But basically, you want to invest in the long term and you will not lose money if you don't take out money from your investments during a downturn. And that is what I had to understand in order to really be able to feel comfortable dumping a ton of money into investments even currently if my investments aren't performing you know well right now because i don't plan to pull them out for another couple decades so i'm okay and that's the mindset you need to be going into as well when you invest money the market is cyclical right so after every high is a low after every low is a high and you just have to be able to ride out those really low points and then be able to take your money out over here. That being said, if you are coming into retirement age, which I don't think is a lot of people on this channel because I know what my analytics are, but if you can't keep your money in the market for a couple more years in order to ride out that low, make sure you have enough money in liquid low risk investments to retire on. And then give your stock portion of your portfolio a couple years to be able to ride out that low into the high. That being said, if your investments are giving you anxiety at any age, it's time to change your asset allocation to make you feel a little bit more comfortable. I know I haven't really done a like true investment video on this page because I'm still like learning myself and I don't feel totally comfortable talking about it, but I have been talking about, you know, investments and, you know, portfolio allocation in a few videos recently. So, you know, hopefully I'll have an investment video in the works soon, but honestly, not anytime soon, because like I said, I'm still getting comfortable with the terminology and understanding things and I don't want to speak about something I'm not 100% comfortable talking about. And finally, the best way to recession proof your budget is to stay calm. The reality of recessions is that most people won't lose their job, portfolios will recover, and recessions won't last forever. So if you're already making sound financial decisions now, stay the course. And if you're able to redo your budget or do your budget and you have time to fully fund your emergency fund, those are things that'll just help you feel more comfortable as we all ride out recessions. I hope this video wasn't too painful. I tried to, you know, keep it to things that were like very manageable and tangible for you guys to do right now if you're freaking out right now about recession about the recession. So, I hope this video helped. Let me know in the comments um, how you're recession proofing your budget and if you have anything to add to what I said today. All right. I'm Asia Dane. Thank you so much for watching this video and I will see you next week. Okay. Bye.